All right, now we're going to talk about graphing the square root and the cube root function. So first, our parent function for square root is f of x equals the square root of x. Um, so what I want to do is graph that with you real quick. Now keep in mind that the values that have to go in for x have to be real numbers because even though we've been introduced to this complex idea of the square root of negative 1, that's not a real number i is something different so we can't graph that on a coordinate plane because that's limited to real numbers so what we have to do with our x values is limit them to non-negative values so that we only get real numbers in return for our f of x values so i start at zero and then i just go up from there and now notice the the numbers that i picked are not just the traditional zero one two three four five they're actually numbers that i know the square root of so could I take the square root of 2? Yes. Could I take the square root of 3? Yes. But those won't be whole number integers that are easy to graph. So I pick numbers that I actually know the square root of. So when I take the square root of that value, I'll actually have a number that's easy to graph. So the square root of 0 is 0. The square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. And the square root of 9 is 3. So I'm going to graph those four points so I get a picture of what this uh, curve for an absolute, sorry, not absolute, a square root function would look like. So I've got 0, 0. I've got 1, 1. And then I've got to go right 4 up 2 right 9 so here's 7 8 would be here 9 would be approximately in this area and then I go up 3 so right around here I would have my fourth point and you could tell that the gap between these two and the gap between these two and the gap between these two are not the same so that's an indication that I'm gonna have a curve here but I do continue to go up ever so slightly um, one of the things to keep in mind is that the x squared and the square root of x are inverse functions so these graphs are interestingly similar although you could tell that the square root function is essentially only half of what a sideways parabola might look like and that'll be something we talk about a little bit more when we get to inverse functions um, but here's our curve, and it, it does curve, and it does continue to go up and to the right, but it's a lot slower than some of the other functions that we've seen increasing up and to the right. All right, so really quickly, we could talk about the domain and the range here. So it looks like that my smallest x value that I can use all the way to the left is actually 0. And I do have a point there, so I'm going to use the brackets. But with this arrow, I do continue to the right, and I'm headed toward positive infinity, which means close it with a parenthesis because I don't actually ever get to a point. All right, range. My lowest y value seems to be this 0, and I continue to go up, 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 even though it's slowly toward positive infinity. No asymptotes still. That's, again, those imaginary lines that I get close to but never actually touch, so I don't have any of those just yet. I do have an x-intercept at the origin, 0, 0. I have a y-intercept also at the origin, 0, 0. Um, do I have a maximum or a minimum? I do have a minimum value. This point, 0, 0, is my minimum. Uh, and I think about it in terms of the same thing with a vertex of a parabola or a vertex with an absolute value. Is there a point that I'm definitely not going above or below? And in this case, I definitely don't go past that point there. What's my end behavior? So as x approaches negative infinity as x approaches positive infinity what's happening to my graph well my graph actually never goes past zero as i'm moving left so i never actually approach negative infinity because my graph does terminate right there at the origin so we would say this time as x approaches zero so as x approaches zero is where the y value is heading toward where the y values are heading toward the origin so the y value would be zero there now, as the x's are heading toward positive infinity, that will be way out to the right, that's when I am heading up and I am heading toward positive infinity for my y values. So interesting enough that this doesn't go in 
it doesn't have two arrows for two different directions. All right, even odd neither. Well, because it's only got one piece, I don't have that two pieces needed for a reflection over the x axis, sorry, over the y axis for my even function, so that's out. And again, only one piece, so no reflection over the origin, so that's out for odd, so I am stuck with a neither for this function. Um, I did have a place that I definitely stopped. I didn't continue going, so I did have an endpoint that makes me a discontinuous function right here. Graph one of the more uh, complicated examples here um, for transformations on our square root function. So notice I've got a negative and I've got a 2 outside of my function. So that's going to lead me to a, a reflection over the x-axis as well as a vertical stretch times 2. So all my y values, I'm going to change the sign and multiply by 2. So I'm going to go ahead real quick and get the parent function on here for you. I got the parent function on here for you, and I'm going to take each of these points, and I'm going to apply these transformations. So it's the y values that are getting affected. So I'm going to flip the sign, and I'm going to multiply by 2. So I'm at 0, and I'm flip the sign, still at 0, multiply 2, still at 0. So this is where my new origin is going to be in the same place. I'm at 1 for my y value, flip the sign now. I'm at negative 1, multiply by 2, I'm at negative Two, so you can already see how my uh, how my function is going to be heading down now instead of up. All right, I was at positive two. Now I'm at negative two. Multiply by two, and I'm at negative four. I was at positive three. Now I'm at negative three. Multiply by two, and I'm at negative six. And you can see this curve now goes down and to the right. So that is going to change uh, some of the information on here. My domain is going to stay the same, 0 to positive infinity. But my range now, 0 is my maximum. Okay, so I do have a maximum in this case. So my minimum, as my y values continue to go down, 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 my minimums, or I seem to be approaching negative infinity as I go down. No asymptotes still. I do cross the x-axis at the origin, 0, 0, as well as the y-intercept is on the y-axis at 0, 0 as well. In behavior, as x approaches 0, my y values are also headed towards 0. And this time, as x approaches positive infinity, way out to the right, I'm now going down. So my y's are heading toward negative infinity this time. I did stop at that endpoint, so I'm discontinuous, and this is what my function would look like if I had a reflection and a vertical stretch times 2. Shoot to a uh, new function, the cube root function. So you can see the parent function is here. f of x equals the cube root of x. So uh, a neat thing about this one, negatives underneath the radical this time are not an issue because when you take a cube root that's multiplying a number by itself three times, we can actually have cube roots of negative numbers. So negatives aren't an issue, and we're really not going to have any boundaries as far as those x values. So the domain will be negative infinity to positive infinity because, again, there are no values that I are off limits for underneath the radical for a cube root function. But I did pick some strategic numbers, and if you can look over here in your x column, you'll see that I picked numbers that I actually know the cube root of. So the cube root of each of these are going to be nice uh, integers that are easy to graph, and I strategically picked those, but there are an infinite number, and you can take the cube root of 4, you can take the cube root of negative 1, you can't take the cube root of positive 5, all of those, but I strategically picked these because they're numbers that I actually are going to get nice results for in easy graphs. So here we go. Let's, let's find what the cube root of each of these x values are, and then go ahead and graph the parent function. The cube root of negative 8, that means the number that I multiply by itself three times to get negative 8, that would be negative 2. What's the number that I multiply by itself three times to get negative 1? Negative 1. What's the number that I multiply by itself three times to get 0? 0. What's the number that I multiply by itself three times to get 1? 1. What's the number that I multiply by itself three times to get 8? Positive 2. 
So those will be what my parent function is, and I'm going to go ahead and get that graph for you, and we'll take a look what that looks like. Okay, so now I've got the parent function on there for you, and hopefully what you could see is that it looks like somebody took the letter S and just stretched it left and right horizontally at a, a long way and kind of made it a lot of a wider S. And you do see that it, as we go to negative infinity, my graph is going down and to the left. And as I head toward positive infinity on the right, I'm going up and to the right. So this graph does continue to go up and down almost like a line, but it does have this curve here um, that I do have to keep in mind because again, the gap between these two points and the gap between these two points and these points and these points, none of those are the same so that the curve does have to be in place. It's not linear. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what the characteristics of this cube root function might be. Well, domain, again, with these two arrows, I'm going to use every single x value. So that's negative infinity all the way to positive infinity. My range seems to be the same. So even though I'm increasing and decreasing very slowly, I am heading down to the left and up to the right. So all of these y values will be used eventually. So that's down to negative 8 and all the way up to positive 8 for my range. Asymptote, still none of those, still no imaginary line that I get really close to and then never actually touch or cross. So still none for this. Do I, do I cross the x-intercept, or the x-axis rather? Yes. So my x-intercept is at the origin, 0, 0. I do cross the y-axis as well at the origin, 0, 0. Do I have a maximum or a minimum value? No, I don't. I continue to go down forever and up forever in my two different directions here. So I don't seem to have a place where it's a definite bottom or a top point. So none for that. In behavior, well, as x approaches negative infinity, that's way out to the left, where is it pointing? Well, it's pointing down. So that means my y values are headed to negative infinity. And as x approaches positive infinity, that's way out to the right. Where is it pointing? Well, ever so slightly, it's pointing up, up. So that's going to be positive infinity for my end behavior. Now, can I draw the y-axis right down the middle and flip over left and right and they land right on top of each other, mirror images? No, but I can, however, flip diagonally over the origin and have mirror images. So this would be considered an odd function. I never had to pick up my pencil. So this cube root graph is a continuous graph. The example two here, which has a vertical shrink of one half, which means my y values are all going to be cut in half. And then I'm going to translate uh, left one unit. So I wanted to do one of those so you could kind of see what that might look like. And I'm going to get the graph down first to try to get through these characteristics as quick as I can as we're running out of time here. All right, so I want to get the parent function on there and then move these according to the transformation. Parent function on here, I've identified the two transformations. So we're going to uh, multiply the y values by half, and then we're going to move all the points to the left one unit. Okay, so all the way out here, you can see my y value is negative 2, so times a half will be negative 1. And then I've got to move to the left one unit, so that's going to take me um, almost off my screen here for my point. All right, next, I'm going to be over here at negative 1. Multiply by a half is at negative 1 half. Multi or slide left 1 unit, and I'm here. Okay, 0 times a half is 0. Slide left 1, and I'm here. 1 times a half is a half. Slide left 1, and I'm here. And finally, I'm at 2 times a half will bring me to 1. Slide left 1 unit will take me over to 7, and I'm there. So now I want to go ahead and sketch in the best I can. And I'm going to draw through here and hit my points the best I can. And hopefully you could see what the compression has done. Shrinking it down has squeezed this curve closer together and almost made it look like it got stretched wider to the left and right as I've pushed down from the top and bottom. Also, you can see that I've shifted left of the origin one unit. Um, the domain is still going to be negative infinity to infinity. My range is still going to be negative infinity to infinity. Even though it's increasing and decreasing very slowly, it does eventually get there. No asymptotes. I do cross the x-axis at negative 1, 0. I do cross the y-axis at uh, 0, 1 half. Um, I do not have a maximum or a minimum this time. Uh, my end behavior as x 
approaches negative infinity, my y values are going down to negative infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, way out to the right, the arrow is pointing up, and so I'm headed toward positive infinity. This is no longer an odd function. It wasn't an even function to begin with, and it's no longer an odd function as I've slid away from the origin. So I'm stuck with neither this time, but I still don't have to pick up my pencil when I...